pray together? Lord, we thank you so much for your presence in our midst. Thank you that you desire to be in the midst of your people and that you make that so. However, whatever needs to be accomplished, you do that because of your great love for us. And we're so grateful today to be your people. Lord, now I pray in your name that you would captivate our minds and our hearts, that you would capture every thought and that it would be submitted to your lordship. Help us, O oh God, this day to have ears to hear what you would speak to us from your heart to ours, and help us, O oh God, to respond to you when you call us. We thank you, Lord, for all of these things. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe the Lord has brought me here today to give you a word. It is a word of the Lord for you. If you are here, the Lord has brought you to this place to hear it today. And uh, this is what he would say to you, and it is actually from his word in Matthew's gospel. Come to me. We'll say it again. The Lord says to you, come to me. All you who are weary from your labor and loaded down with burdens, and I will refresh you. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Experience me. Partner with me. For I am strong, yet kind, and humble in heart. I will not use you. And you will discover the relief of a resting place for your inner life. For my yoke is made to fit you well. It was designed just for you. And the weight of my burden is easy to carry. You were designed to partner with me. Your fulfillment will only be found there. The Lord calls us today to rest in him. And I have questions for you to consider that I believe the Lord would bring uh, to us to ponder. What burdens are you carrying today? What burdens are you carrying today? Whose are they? Where did they come from? This is a question we have to ask ourselves on a regular basis because there are a lot of burdens to be had and we pick them up in all kinds of places. Sometimes we give them to ourselves. Sometimes other people put them on us. They're not from the Lord and we have no business carrying them. I will say to you today, if there are burdens you are carrying by yourself, you are not to be carrying those. The Lord has a burden for us, but notice the language here. He puts it in the language of a yoke. Even the burdens God gives us, we do not carry alone. We partner with him. He shares his burdens with us as he wills. If you are carrying burdens by yourself, today is the day to put them down. Here, now. The Lord is saying to you, come to me and put that down. How can we take up what he would share with us if, we are, if our hands are full with all of our own stuff or all of the stuff that other people have placed on us? What are you carrying today? Where did it come from and whose is it? Is it even yours to carry? Where do you feel loaded down today? Where do you feel the weight today? We need to inspect these things. We need to let the Lord show us where these things came from. Maybe we are carrying the burden of the Lord, but we just did that little thing we do where we add to it. Oh, Lord, let me help you accomplish your purpose with my great plan. 
Maybe you've never done that. I've done that. I add burdens to myself trying to make his plan better. I add burdens to myself trying to make his plan faster. I add burdens to myself trying to run away from his plans. Hallelujah. Burdens. Where do they come from? What have I added? Did you know that even a good thing to do can be a burden you're not supposed to carry? There are a lot of good things to do. A lot of good things to do. The question the Lord has for us today, are you yoked up with him? Are you partnered with him? Where in our lives is that partnership not evident? Where in our lives are we running as fast as we can and working as hard as we can and we are not in the yoke with him? Wasted effort, wasted energy, and we don't have it to spare. What are you doing today? When I was pondering this text, I was thinking through, who might the audience have been when Jesus said these words? The text places it uh, in his travels when he's ministering in various cities. And so I was pondering, who did Jesus say these words to in the first place? And might we see ourselves in that audience? And I think we do. First group I want to mention today where we might see ourselves are those people who are working very, very hard to perfect themselves from the outside. They're working very hard to keep all the rules. They're working very hard to impress the Lord. They're working very hard to impress other people. They're working very hard to earn his favor, to earn the love they already have. Is that you today? Are you carrying the burden of working really hard to please? That burden will weigh you down. That burden will weigh you down to the point that you will not have the resources to do what God is actually calling you to do. And the Lord says to you today, come to me and put that down. Leave it in this room Leave it here. You do not have to work hard to make yourself perfect to please the Lord. I'm going to say that again. You do not have to work hard to make yourself perfect to please the Lord. Maybe you're working very hard to please your parents. Maybe you're working very hard to please your professors. I love that. Don't do that. Yeah. that. That speaks to my ego, but that doesn't help you. Right? Am I saying you should not work hard in school? Not at all. You should work very hard in school. I'm saying you should not work hard to please people. If the Lord has called you to Vanguard, I believe he has called most of you here. That's why you're here. If he's called you here, he's called you here to be yoked with him in that calling, to partner with him in what you are doing here, not working hard by yourself to please him or us or anybody. This is about partnering with the Lord. Trying to please will destroy you. It will use up all that you have. Stop it. That's mama talking. Okay? Stop it. Embrace the calling that God has given you to yoke with him. You don't need to impress anyone, and you're never going to be perfect, so stop trying. Be who you are in the process that you're in, and partner with the Lord in that process. How do you know if you're doing this? You're very tired all the time. It's never enough. No matter how much you do, that empty space still feels empty inside. Sound familiar? Every once in a while, you find yourself looking at other people with that judgmental attitude. They're not working as hard as I am. They're not as good as I am. I'm going to be better than that. Are you comparing yourself with people? Stop. Come to the Lord. Lay that burden down so that you can focus on what he has for you second kind of people that I think were in the original audience are people like this, and maybe you see yourself here. They are people who have found themselves in an environment, 
in which they have very little power. Okay? Remember, this is a, an empire. These are people that are, that are oppressed. They are in an empire. They find themselves with not much power. And there's a group of people who respond to that situation by doing everything they can and working very, very hard to work the system. All of their energy is going into working the system. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to make it work for me. I'm going to um, cut corners. I'm going to move around ends. I'm going to do all the things that I can do to work the system. And they're working very hard to do that. And they're getting very tired and they're very burdened with that. All of their time and energy is going into how to figure out how to succeed within a corrupt system. If you're busy doing that, you're not listening to what the Lord is saying. If you're so busy doing that, you're going to be, again, piling on yourself all kinds of burdens and stresses that go with corrupt systems, and you're going to try to navigate in that instead of partnering with the Lord in the yoke. Does the Lord work in the midst of corrupt systems? The fact that we are all still here knowing him proves that he does. There have been corrupt systems from the beginning of humanity. There will continue to be corrupt systems. Welcome to life. They're not going anywhere. What I'm saying to you is, yeah, you may have to live in one, but you don't have to give all of your time and energy trying to work that system. That will wear you out. Again, you're going to find yourself on a hamster wheel running very hard and getting nowhere and just keeling over one day. This is not what God has for his people. But I'm in a corrupt system, I know. But you got to make it, I know. Stand on your own tooth, I know. I know all of the American culture stuff. I know, I'm American, I'm in the culture, I get it. But this is not going to give us Energy, this is not going to give us fruitfulness. This is not going to help us experience the Lord. This is not going to do kingdom stuff. You will not work the system toward a kingdom outcome. There's only one way to get a kingdom outcome, and that is to partner with the king. What is he doing? What is he calling you to? And we got to sort these things. We've got to look them over. We've got to assess. We've got to look at our lives. What burdens are we carrying? I think it's so funny because we do this stuff and then we have, to quote my friend Marquita, the crustification to come back to God and get mad at him because we're so tired. How dare you, Lord, make me so tired. Make me do all of this stuff. And he's sitting there. I can just see it's like, I'm not making you do any of that. That's you. You're doing that to yourself. Stop trying to work the system and get in the yoke with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He wants to partner with you. He wants to do amazing things in the midst of the corruption. He wants to do that, but he will only do that his way. We cannot work the system enough to fix the problems of this world. And we cannot work the system enough to guarantee our own personal success in it. That makes us weary. It gives us burdens. Yeah. The Lord says, put those down. Put those down. And I will refresh you. And I will show you what your role is in the current situation. Another group that I see in the original audience are those who do not know the Lord at all. Right? They're just hanging out. Gentiles and Romans, possibly there. Yeah? Just hanging out. They don't know this guy. He's some crazy Israeli, right, who's just running around. and It's like, what? What's going on with this guy? I don't know. He said something about a yoke. I don't know. I don't get it. Okay? They don't know what's going on. And here they are. And here's Jesus saying even to them, I believe, come to me. You are burdened. You know what can make you really, really tired? Trying to avoid the emptiness in your life through distractions and entertainments and partying. That can make you very tired. We're coming up on spring break. You are college students. This is the United States of America. Hallelujah. Yeah. I know what spring break is about for some. I know what spring break is about. Some of you may already have your plans ready to roll. Right? Just watching the clock tick till I can get to that point where I can once again go try to forget 
the gnawing emptiness in my soul with a temporary numbing. What? Did she just say that? Yes, that's what she just said. You know, it's an interesting thing about numbing. It doesn't fix the pain. It just distracts you from it for a short period of time. When you've got the pain and the emptiness in your heart, that is not going to fill it. I know people have told you this. I'm telling you again, and that is not going to fill it. All you're going to end up with is more burdens that you're carrying around. It is. I'm not saying you can't go have a good time. What kind of good time you have is between you and the Lord. He is not going to burden you with pagan practices. I can guarantee you that. He's not going to do it. Why? Because it just makes more burden for you. Why would you pile burdens on someone who is already about to crash under the burdens they have? Just stopping the feeling of the pain for a couple days isn't going to fix it. The only thing that's going to fix it is letting go of the burdens. Putting aside those practices. It is a swirl out there just even trying to keep up. Some of us are so tired and so weary because we're spending all of our time trying to convince ourselves that we matter in this world by hoping that somebody out there will reflect ourselves back to us. That's what the technology is all about, yes? I'm going to put myself out there over and over again hoping that somebody out there will tell me that I'm important. How many people are following me? That tells me how important I am. No! No! Right, this is, no, that is a burden. That will work you into the ground. Do you understand? That is going to weary you in your soul. And you're still going to be empty at the end of the day. Jesus is saying, put that down. Come to me. I will help you know who you are. I will give you the sense of understanding of your calling. I will show you the way of life that is designed just for you so that you will have fulfillment and that you will not be empty in your soul. I will refresh you. The answer is here, the Lord says. Come to me. Come to me, he says. Come to me. Last group are the disciples those who know the Lord well and are walking with him and have been walking with him and have seen him do great things and have come along in their maturing process. And yet we see in the lives of the disciples there are still little areas here and there where they're trying to do things on their own, where they're still trying to figure it out in their own strength, where they're still trying to not be in the yoke with the Lord but tell him how it's going to be, those little areas. Maybe that's you today. Maybe your discipleship is solid. Maybe you've been walking with the Lord for a while, but the Lord would say to you today, look in your heart. There's a couple of little areas where you've you've gotten off over here and you've taken burdens onto yourself that I did not give you. So just put those down. We have to keep doing this process of assessing our burdens. Where have I taken up things that were not mine to take up? Where am I trying to do things by myself that are not mine to do by myself? What is the Lord calling me to? What yoke does he have for me? What is he sharing with me? That's where my priorities are. That's where my purpose is. Maybe you find yourself in one of these categories today. Maybe you find yourself in more than one of these categories. I'm going to say it again, what the Lord says to you. If you would just close your eyes and focus and listen to the voice of the Spirit, open your heart to the opportunity for Him to speak to you and show you what's going on in there. Yeah? At Vanguard University, your story matters. Where will it take you next? For more information, please visit vanguard.edu.